some people would like to just put on makeup. Why? To, 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 I don't know why. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. If you're not brutally honest with yourself, it's not going to end well. Wow. And in life. And you can't play the blame game. If you want to rehabilitate yourself, you have to take responsibility, man up, and basically say, you know what, I'm going to make a change for the better. This was a self-realization I came to that was painful because I was one of these people. I was one of the top people like this, looking a certain way, acting a certain way, but truly being soft on the inside when I needed to be hard, when I needed to be a real man. If you watch the last video, you'll be familiar with the book, Lectures on Jung's Typology, that I've been using to talk about the inferior function. And in that first video, we looked at how you can compare and contrast the dominant and inferior function in a general sense, and how you can also observe the inferior function in real life. And again, this is in a general sense. This book's a good reference for comparing and contrasting the inferior function in a really, uh, in a really accessible way. So we're going to be looking at specific functions in this video. But in the last video, if you haven't seen it, it provides the the basis and very general description for how you can do this for each function. But today, in this video, I want to talk about extroverted sensation and introverted intuition. So I want this series to be a one-stop shop for comparing and contrasting the attitudes of the dominant and the inferior, but I want to start with the uh, the behavior, the general behavior of someone that is dominant introverted intuition type that has inferior extroverted sensation and a dominant extroverted sensation type with inferior, inferior introverted intuition. And I want to be able to compare and contrast the two. I want to do this using the book. So I want to do this using a textbook and then relate it to real life examples of celebrities using clips that can be found on my Instagram. So you can always go back and check there and look at more examples instead of just the ones that are in this video and yeah i just want to i want people to be able to type other people based on what they've seen in the clips of celebrities so i want you to be able to study the celebrity clips and then go over this information again and then apply it in real life i want to start off with a recap from the previous video introduction to the inferior function part one I would like now to characterize the inferior function and its general behavior. You can say that all superior functions have a tendency to behave in a certain way. The inferior function, too, irrespective of which it may be, has a general type of behavior. And correspondingly, someone that is extroverted sensation dominant has inferior introverted intuition. The extroverted sensation type is represented in someone whose gift and specialized function is to sense and relate in a concrete and practical way to outer objects. Such people observe everything, smell everything, and on entering a room, know almost at once how many people are present. Afterward, they always know whether so-and-so was there and what dress she had on. If you put such a question to an intuitive, he would say he had not noticed and had no idea, and what did she have on? The sensation type is a master at noticing details. There is a famous story of a professor of jurisprudence who tried to demonstrate to his students the unreliability of witnesses. He had two people come into the room, exchange a few sentences, and then begin to fight each other. He stopped them and said, Now, ladies and gentlemen, please write down exactly what you saw. The professor then showed that nobody was capable of giving an exact and objective account of what had happened. They all missed certain points. Based on this staged incident, he tried to show his students that they should not rely on eyewitnesses too much. This story illustrates the tremendous individual relativity of sensation. It is only relatively well developed. Some are more, and others less gifted at it. I would say that the extroverted sensation type would score highest in this field and would probably miss fewest points. The extroverted sensation type has the best photographic apparatus, as it were. He can quickly and objectively relate to outer facts. This is why this type is found among the good mountaineers, engineers, and business people, all of whom have a wide and accurate awareness of outer reality and all its differentiations. This type will notice the texture of things, whether silk or wool. He'll have a certain feeling for the material. Good taste is also generally present. 
Another aspect of inferior intuition in an extroverted sensation type is a sudden attraction to anthroposophy or some other cocktail of Eastern metaphysics, generality of a most otherworldly type. Very realistic engineers join such a movement with a completely uncritical mind and get quite lost in it. That is because their inferior intuition has such an archaic character. On their writing desks, amazingly enough, one will often find mystical texts, but of a rather second-class level. If asked why they read these books, they'll say it's just nonsense, but it helps them get to sleep. Their superior function is still denying the inferior one. But if you ask the anthroposophists at Dornock who supplied money for their buildings, you'll find that it came from just such extroverted sensation people. The American nation has a very great number of extroverted sensation types, and this is why such strange movements flourish especially well in the United States, to a much greater extent than in Switzerland. In Los Angeles, you can find practically every kind of fantastic sect. I've actually been skipping around here. In this chapter, the author uses a lot of examples of extroverted sensation type people she's known. And I've, I've left them out, but if you get the book, a lot of them are kind of funny. She uses the example of, like, uh, her primary school teacher, who was her, supposed to be her science teacher, but he didn't teach any scientific theory because it wasn't right in front of his face. So he couldn't, like, he, dist he distrusted anything that wasn't uh, something you could touch or see or anything derived from the five senses. Anything theoretical, he said that the science was continually changing, so there's no point in going over it. He said, you know, there was an example of... Uh, describing a worm in biology and he said look at the worm through the microscope and whatever you see write that down that's natural science and there's a lot of other examples like that in the book and they're really psychological types as well and this book in describing the inferior function they use extreme examples of people with a, a an, one attitude so someone that is an extreme extroverted sensation type so someone that really doesn't put much emphasis on any other attitude besides sensation. These are the kinds of people that are used as examples. So she tells the science teacher example because he's supposed to be a natural science teacher or professor. I can't remember which one it was, but he's supposed to be explaining how general theory explains reality. But he's basically just saying, just look at whatever you see in front of you and anything else, you can't really trust it. So she even, she gives the example of, like, uh, the time she had the flu, and she presented him with, like, a, a note from, from, his, from her mother, and the professor or the teacher didn't believe her, and she's trying to show that, uh, you know, off the bat, somebody that is an extreme, uh, or someone that has an extreme emphasis on extroverted sensation, they're very distrustful of anything that they don't see or can't experience with their five senses. So any anything that is abstract or uh, even approaches intuition, I think those are the words that she would use in the book. Someone, someone that's very extremely focused on this attitude will be very distrustful of it. And that's one aspect. So she even, she gives another example of a of an extroverted sensation type mountaineer that she knew that was like a very accomplished mountaineer. But she would tell, uh, she, would, she would engage in fantasy when she told ghost stories every so often. And then if you asked her about the ghost stories after, um, you know, after she told them to entertain people at night, then she would just like shake them off or she would, you know, she'd kind of brush it off. Okay, so I'm going to keep reading and I'm going to continue with one of those examples. I remember once analyzing such a type. One day I had a telephone call from him. The man was sobbing at the telephone and said he was overwhelmed. It happened. I can't tell you. I'm in danger. Now, this was not a hysterical person. He didn't have a latent psychosis or anything of the kind. And you'd never expect him to behave in this way. I was astonished and asked him if he'd be able to go to the station and buy a ticket and come to Zurich. He was living in another town. He said he thought he could manage, so I told him to come. By the time he had arrived, he had snapped back into a superior sensation and brought me a basket of cherries, which we gaily ate together. I said, and now what? But he couldn't even tell me. In the meantime, by getting to the station and buying the cherries, he'd got back into the upper level again. He'd been attacked for a minute from the other level, and the only thing I got out of him was, for a minute I knew what God was. It is as if I realized God, and it shook me so much that I thought I'd go mad, and now it is gone again. I remember it but I can't convey it anymore, and I'm no longer in it. 
There, via the inferior function, intuition, he suddenly had the whole collective unconscious in the self. In a second, like a flash, it all came up and completely shook the upper part of his personality, but he couldn't hold it. That was the beginning of the coming up of inferior intuition, which shows its tremendously creative and positive, as well as its dangerous aspect. Intuition has that quality of conveying a tremendous amount of meaningful content simultaneously. He saw the whole thing in one second. It came up for a minute, and then it went again. There he was munching cherries back in his flat, ordinary extroverted sensation world. That would be an example of the first genuine appearance of inferior intuition in such a type. Okay, in the previous video, we talked about how if you have an arrangement of functions for an extroverted sensation dominant type person, then you take away all the other functions besides the dominant and the inferior, you will get the attitudes of dominant, extroverted sensation, and inferior, introverted intuition. And if you connect this to passages I selected from the book, it more or less tells you that you can expect, in extroverted sensation, you can expect a frequent emphasis on concrete facts gained from the five senses. And then by virtue of their inferior, introverted intuition, you can expect flashes of introspection and abstract self-reflection. In order to show this dichotomy between introverted intuition and extroverted sensation, first in terms of people that are extroverted sensation dominant, I'm going to begin by showing somebody that is introverted intuition dominant. And then I'm going to show three examples of people that are extroverted sensation dominant in instances in which they are displaying qualities of introverted intuition that you would expect from someone that is an extroverted sensation dominant type person. First clip I'm going to play, again, is an introverted intuition dominant type person. I'm going to play clinical psychologist Jordan Peterson, who is someone that shows the reverse of what I've summarized. So he is someone that you'll see flashes of extroverted sensation in clips that you can see on the internet of this person. Whereas, with the other three, these people, if you watch clips of them, you'll notice that you'll see flashes of introspection and flashes of abstract self-reflection. In more specific terms, the three extroverted sensation dominant type people you'll be seeing have been more or less forced to develop uh, or to pay attention to their inferior function, which is introverted intuition, because they've spent a long time in prison. So first clip is the opposite of what we're looking for. Someone that's showing flashes of extroverted sensation. The other three are going to be someone that is extroverted sensation dominant that is showing flashes of introverted intuition. And the celebrities here for the extroverted sensation Dominant type people are Wes Watson and Big Herc, who are both uh, life coaches and fitness coaches who spend a lot of time talking about how their experiences in prison uh, had an effect on their personality. So what they did before and how they reflected on that to become what they are now. And the third person is going to be Joey Diaz, who's a comedian. And he does a lot of the same. So he speaks about his time in prison and shares a lot of experiences of how he used to be and how that affects how he is now. Together in the workplace. Yes, I, how do, I you do it. How do you know? Because I work with a, a lot of women. Right. Well, it's been happening for, what, 40 years? And, and things are deteriorating very rapidly at the moment in terms of the relationships between men and women. And you speak is there about, sexual well, harassment in the workplace? Yes. Should it stop? That would be good. Will it? Well... Not at the moment, it won't, because we don't know what the rules are. Do you think men and women can work in the workplace together? I don't know. Without sexual harassment? We'll see. We'll see. How many years will it take for men and women working in the workplace together? More than 40. To get a sense. We don't know what the rules are. Like, what? here's a rule. Don't, don't How about you... no makeup in the workplace? Why would that be a rule? <laughs> Why should you wear makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what is it then? What's the purpose of makeup? Some people would like to just put on makeup. Why? To, 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 I don't know why. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. 
This was a self-realization I came to that was painful because I was one of these people. I was one of the top people like this, looking a certain way, acting a certain way, but truly being soft on the inside when I needed to be hard, when I needed to be a real man. So as I saw this going on, I would consistently push my people to be their strongest. I would create assets around me because that was the only way I was getting out of that situation alive. In a situation like the pen, Cali inmate, GP, you're falling if your people fall. If you go down, I'm going down with you. So I have to, I have to create strengths upon everybody around me. I have to expel their weaknesses. And so how do you do that? You cannot possess them on your own. The second you possess what you're telling someone to quit, you're a hypocritical motherfucker and you need to really look within and realize that you're doing exactly what you're telling people not to. Well, depending on what you look like, you'll get more time than the next person because they feel that you can handle it. So this is a, it's, it's not a, a, a racially evenly, you know, uh, set up system. And, and as far as rehabilitation, you got to rehabilitate yourself. Every day I tried to figure out what it was that got me there. I was a straight A student. I wasn't stupid. I had 4.0. I never, I got maybe two C's in my whole high school career. You know what I mean? I wasn't stupid. I was very book smart. And I, I just made a lot of bad choices because of just how I looked at things. So I had to figure out how did I get to that point and reverse that. And it took me, I just kept working on myself. But a lot of people don't want to work on themselves. They want to blame the government. Oh, man, the police, man. Or, oh, man, my mom or my dad wasn't around or blah, 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 or this and that. And you can't play the blame game. If you want to rehabilitate yourself, you have to take responsibility man up and basically say, you know what, I'm going to make a change for the better and I'm going to stop making stupid decisions and I'm not going to hang around these, these dummies. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. Especially yeah, at that it, age. Takes, it takes 20 years to look back. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it tonight how I was taking a shower that if I quit comedy tomorrow, it would be to sign back up in college and take a psychology class oh, and become wow. a psychiatrist. And do whatever I had to take. I'd probably be 65. But at 65, I would help so many people so deeper. Yeah. Because I went through it. Yeah. This is not somebody who studied it. I went through it, wrote about it, looked at it. Mm -hmm. I think about it. I think about what made you. I broke it down from the macro to the micro. Well, you could put yourself in there. You could put them in your you shoes and vice versa. When you become a comedian. Yeah. If you're not brutally honest with yourself, it's not going to end well. Wow. And in life, in life in general. Yeah. Now we're going to flip the attitudes upside down and we're going to look at dominant introverted intuition versus inferior extroverted sensation. The introverted intuitive type has the same capacity as the extroverted intuitive for smelling out the future having the right guess or the right hunch about the not-yet-seen future possibilities of a situation. But his intuition is turned within, and therefore he is primarily the type of the religious prophet, of the seer. On a primitive level, he is the shaman who knows what the gods and the ghosts and the ancestral spirits are planning, and who conveys their messages to the tribe. In psychological language, we should say that he knows about the slow processes that go on in the collective unconscious, the archetypal changes, and he communicates them to society. The prophets of the Old Testament, for instance, were people who, while the children of Israel were happily asleep, as the masses always are, from time to time told them what Yahweh's real intentions were, what he was doing now, and what he wanted his people to do. The people generally did not enjoy hearing these messages. Many introverted intuitives are to be found among artists and poets. They generally are artists who produce very archetypal and fantastic material, such as you find in Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Gustav Meyrink's The Gollum, or Alfred Kuban's The Other Side. This kind of visionary art is generally only understood by later generations as a representation of what was going on in the collective unconscious at that time. The inferior sensation of this type also has difficulties in noticing the needs of the body and controlling its appetites. Swedenborg had a vision in which God himself told him he should not eat so much. He ate naturally, without the slightest self-discipline, and with complete unawareness. Swedenborg was also a typical introverted intuitive, the prophet or seer type, and he was simply coarse and uninhibited about overeating. 
the introverted intuitive also suffers as the extroverted intuitive does from a tremendous vagueness where facts are concerned. The inferior sensation of an introverted intuitive is extremely intense, but it breaks through only here and there and then fades again from the field of awareness. The introverted intuitive has particular trouble in approaching sex because it involves his inferior extroverted sensation. It is most tragically mirrored in the works of Nietzsche, for instance, where, towards the end of his career, shortly before he went insane, very coarse sexual illusions penetrate his poems and also appear in Thus Spoke Zarathustra. When he went insane, he apparently produced material of that kind, which was destroyed after his death because of its absolutely distasteful character. Inferior extroverted sensation in his case was very much connected with women and sex in a completely concrete way, and he didn't know how to deal with the problem at all. The positive aspect of inferior extroverted sensation in the case of an introverted intuitive is to be found in an interesting way in the illumination experience of Jakob Boma a German mystic and an introverted intuitive type. He had a wife and six children for whom he never earned any money. He was in constant trouble with them because his wife always said that instead of writing books about God and fantasizing about the inner development of the Godhead, he would do better to see that his family had something to eat. He was absolutely crucified between the two poles of life. Now his greatest inner experience, a revelation of the Godhead upon which all his later writings are based, came from seeing a ray of light being reflected in a tin plate. That sensation experience snapped him into an inner ecstasy, and within a minute he saw, so to speak, the whole mystery of the Godhead. For years he did nothing except slowly translate into discursive language what he had seen inwardly in one minute, in one second. His writing is so emotional and chaotic because he tried to describe this one experience in so many amplifications but the actual vision was set in motion by seeing a ray of light striking a tin plate on his table. This implies extroverted sensation. An outer sensation fact started off the process of individuation in him. Here one can see, besides the inferior aspect of extroverted sensation, the strange character of wholeness, the mystical aspect, which the inferior function often has. It's interesting that even Swedenborg's overeating connected him with the Godhead. His inferior sensation was connected with his deepest and greatest concern. That's going to conclude the reading from the book. And just like with the extroverted sensation type section, for the introverted intuition type section, we're going to look at an introverted intuition dominant person, uh, an arrangement of functions for an introverted intuition dominant type person. And we're going to take away everything else besides the dominant and the inferior. And what we're left with is dominant introverted intuition and inferior extroverted sensation. We take this a little bit further from the passage, what you can glean from what the author has written about dominant introverted intuition and inferior extroverted sensation is that if you're observing someone who is introverted intuition dominant, you're likely to see that the person frequently engages in introspection and abstract self-reflection. And then you'll notice that they exhibit flashes of an emphasis on concrete facts gained from the five senses. I'm going to switch it up this time from the last section in which I played clips. So I'm going to play first an extroverted sensation dominant type person, then an introverted intuition type person. I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to play an actress, Bella Thorne. Then after that, I'm going to play a clip of chess champion Bobby Fischer. And then musician Tupac Shakur. And then to end, I'm going to end with writer Ayn Rand. Okay, the video is going to end right after the clips. And just to summarize again, you're looking for someone that's usually very introspective. So for the two introverted intuitive type people, we're looking at a philosopher. Ayn Rand, and then a chess champion, Bobby Fischer. They're people that are usually very withdrawn and abstract, but in these clips, you're going to see flashes of an emphasis on concrete facts came from the five senses. I don't know what the misperception is, but I'm guessing it's that, like, I'm a party girl. They'd rather not see that I have my makeup line and my book and my show that I'm writing and all the directing that I'm doing and all the music videos I'm directing for other artists and the fact that I own a record label. I just want to forget all those things. Do you often mm -hmm. feel like people are assuming that you're fighting the battle of 
I was a kid actor, uh -huh. and I'm trying to show you that I'm not anymore. Yeah, because I think that they just want to put you in a box no matter what, a box that they can understand. And they can understand that box. They've heard it before, so they say, okay, then every child actor has to be in that box. But you also grow up. Yes. That, like, isn't that obvious? Like, that's what I always do. People. I was 12. I'm 21 now. Yeah. Like, There's I'm not trying to prove nothing. And in that time, I experienced so so think about what age that puts me at mentally. If you've been working 17 hours like every day since you were like a little kid, what do you think you're gonna act like? Do you well, you smile about it. Yeah. You like to crush another man's ego? Uh-huh. So when they go home that night, you know, they know that they're, they can't kid themselves that they're so hot, you know? You think that Russians are pretty worried about you at this moment? Oh, yeah, they have been ever since I started playing chess. Even as a little boy? That's right. I remember the first thing they ever wrote about me was, uh, you know, he's a talented player, and, uh, you know, they showed a game I played, and then they said, but all this publicity he's getting and all of this attention cannot fail to have a harmful effect on his de you know, personality development. And sure enough, a few months later, I was a rotten person already in their press. I was doing this, I was doing that, I was conceited, you know? This is, you know, before I'd ever even, you know, they even knew anything about me personally, you know. They sting you. They get yeah. to you. Well, they don't anymore because I realize it has nothing to do with me. You know, if you were a great chess player, they'd be saying the exact same things about you. They want me to get on TV and talk about my black sister is a hoe and she's a B-I-T-C-H and she ain't she a money grubber. I ain't fist to say that. I don't have to do that to show that I'm innocent. You know what I'm saying? I'm not guilty. People should look me in my eyes. They should look me in my eyes. And anybody that thinks I committed that rape should go get Brenda's Got a Baby and keep your head up and listen to him thoroughly. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing for, it should not even be to me. I have no um, patience for anybody to doubt me. None. At all. It's too hard out here. You know what I'm saying? If my people don't stand up for me, who is? I understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me. They didn't hear keep your head up. That ain't no fluke. You know, keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh, come up. I didn't do that for me to be smiling in my face to say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't about that. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out my mouth. You understand me? Because it's a struggle on young black males today. Or what they do for you. You love them for their values the virtues which they have achieved in their own character. You don't love causelessly. You don't love everybody indiscriminately. You love only and then, those who deserve it. And then if a man is weak or a woman is weak, then she is beyond, he is beyond love? He certainly does not deserve it. He certainly is beyond. He can always correct it. Man has free will. If a man wants love, he should correct his weaknesses or his flaws, and he may deserve it but he cannot expect the unearned, neither in love nor in money, but you neither have, in matter nor spirit. You have lived in our world and you realize, recognize the fallibility of human beings. There are very few of us then in this world, by your standards, who are worthy of love. Uh, unfortunately, yes, very few. But it well, is open to everybody to make themselves worthy of it and that is all that my moral.